Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. Today uh, I'm coming to you still from my uh, flat in Allen. Uh, Kelly is holding my uh, phone and we're going to try to do a tech talk here um, about a cool, the cool underlying technology that powers uh, our K-Scan product. And basically uh, what that means for you, the customer, which is a thing called dynamic referencing. So I want to get there, but in order to get there, we have to start at the beginning. And I want to start with the technology. And the technology begins with uh, a lens, uh, but it's a very special lens. Uh, it's a lens that normal lenses will basically just uh, take an image in both X and Y of a scene, right? So you can see it in two dimensions, basically. Uh, but these lenses uh, that we're talking about are special ones. They basically take the whole XY image and flatten it into just X. So what that means is, for example, if there was an event like a strobe flash that happens here, in a normal lens, you would have to measure a distance in X and Y, and that would take some time. These special lenses take this strobe flash and basically just flatten it down to its x-axis component. Why is this important? This is important because there's a camera behind this, and the camera that's reading only an x-axis can happen really fast. So fast, literally, it happens hundreds or thousands of times per second. Uh, whereas a true uh, uh, XY component camera chip might take milliseconds to, um, to uh, happen. This happens at such a high frequency, it's absolutely instantaneous. So, because we have these special lenses that take a full field of view in X and Y and distills it down to X, coupled with a camera that finds these strobe events that happen, uh, that can happen literally hundreds or thousands of times per second instantaneously, this is the beginning of the technology. So, we have this, cam this lens and this camera. And it looks down a, um, a viewpoint. Let's call this our viewpoint. Let's say that we have three of those cameras, right? Here's one camera looking down at uh, the room. Uh, and let's say it's looking at it this way. We have a second camera that's looking down the same room, let's say this way. And then we have this third camera here that's looking down this room and let's say this way. So um, these are known angles that, the, that these three cameras are looking down at and these distances between these cameras are also known. So at the end of the day what that means is if we have known distances, known angles, simple geometry will tell us is if a single flash happened in the room, the three cameras saw them simultaneously as the same flash, we could triangulate, based on all of this geometry, where in space that flash occurred. If we had then a second flash, we go from a known point to being able to calculate a line. If we had a third flash, all on a rigid body, we have enough to calculate the position of a body in space. And if that body in space was, let's say, a probe system, we could begin to measure something in the volume, like, say, this table. Remember what I said earlier, what was special about this was that these cameras can happen several hundreds or thousands of times per second which means it's instantaneous or real-time. So we have a real-time tracking position where this probe, if you will, fed on these LEDs flashing and those cameras seeing it 
in space. And now we can basically measure, I can measure something like this table in a volume, well, this is about three meters deep uh, that you can see, so about the size of a typical European family room. So, um, great. So you might say, great, Jay. What, we've cr what I've created is, uh, with this technology, uh, a CMM. We've seen that before. And all of the challenges that happen with a CMM of this nature, like articulating arms or bridge CMMs, the first problem that we have is what happens if these cameras move? Well, if these cameras move, you have to start over or re-reference your system. Or what if the part moves? Okay, then you also have to start over. Here's where this technology gets interesting. Because in addition to putting LEDs on the probe, you could also put LEDs on the part and actively track the movement of the part. So if the part did move, it would be fine because the system could see that the part had moved and still track the relative position of the probe to the part. This is uh, dynamic referencing. We are dynamically referencing the position of the part relative to the probe. So the part could move and we don't need to recalibrate the position uh, of what we're measuring. Not only could the part move, the part could be moving. So let's pretend that this uh, um, table was suspended in midair and swaying in the breeze. We could still measure it with it moving. The system that is operating several hundreds or thousands of times per second could track that movement and still give you the relative position. It was actively tracking the position of the part. So the ability to have the part being able to move or be moving is really what makes the um, T-Scan or this technology special. So we employ this technology in a product called T-Scan where we not only, we don't stop at a probe system, we actually put a full laser line scanner uh, on the end of this, so not just a tactile probe, but a full non-contact laser line scanner. Now we can measure and get a profile of the part, or if this big part, let's say this table was a casting, was on a pallet, and I jumped on it, I could, the part could be moving, I could still scan it, no problem. I literally could then take it, crane it, put it up, get the underside of this part. The measurement is still good. So the concept of being able to measure down a volume is not new, but the concept of being able to actively track the position of and actively reference the position of the part is, some, is something that is new. And doing uh, metrology with this underlying technology uh, really enables uh, something called um, dynamic tracking and is something that is available. Uh, we package it and call it uh, T-Scan. Um, but I think it's really cool because it really gives you, the user, the power to um, basically be free in how you measure your part um, without having to re-reference um, the position of your part. Um, so with that, um, this was just kind of a snapshot of the underlying technology behind uh, dynamic referencing. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, uh, watching this in my attempt to do a tech talk here in uh, our family room in Allen. Um, please continue to stay safe and uh, hope you see us uh, again next Thursday. Cheers. Bye.